Hey guys, this is Matt with RawHydroponics.com and today we're going to be talking about some of the different CO2 options. So first off, we'll talk about adding CO2 to your garden. Um, when you're thinking about adding CO2, you got to make sure you've asked yourself a couple questions. Like have you pretty much maximized your gardening technique and your yields with the garden that you already have? Have you maxed out the lighting in your space correctly so that your plants are going to be able to use the CO2? And do you have proper you know, temperature control so that you can run the temperature ranges that are ideal for CO2 gardening? And then last but not least, do you have the ability to seal your room up properly so that you can maintain high levels of CO2, um, which usually requires air conditioners? Um, if you can't do any of those or you haven't got to that point yet, I would recommend maybe starting with something a little bit less um, you know, in, intense than a generator or a tank. I would start with something maybe more like these bags or these pucks. Um, but if you have been able to max out all your other ideas and all the other, I mean, all the other pieces of your garden, you know, light, temperature, all that kind of thing, then you what might be in the market for something like a generator or a CO2 tank. Um, first, we'll talk about the natural options of CO2. Um, a lot of times you'll see these mushroom bags. This is made by a local company here in Michigan. Um, they, you can see it's really nice and alive. Um, it basically creates CO2 through the byproduct of a mushroom culture eating through a substrate. Um, because there's no oxygen in these bags, they don't want to produce mushrooms. They just continue to produce CO2 and uh, myceliate the medium. Um, and then there's a breathable pouch on the front. And as you can see, there's you know some pressure built up in here from the CO2, and it's basically always coming out the front. These are already activated. This company actually dates them, so you know how you know fresh they are and those kind of things. But um, if you're getting one that you can't see on the inside, it could be a little old, so you might not get the same shelf light out, out of one to another, depending on where you're getting them from. So keep that in mind. Um, they do make some cool versions of this. This exhale bag is actually separated from the mushroom culture, and so you can see the substrate's not inoculated yet and you have the mushroom culture up here um, once we take the seal off and introduce that to our substrate it'll myceliate and it'll get to the same point as this but this gives you kind of like a nine months of co2 or seven six to eight months i guess to co2 and you end up with kind of a peak and then a decline because as this starts to culture you get a little bit of co2 once it gets to this point you kind of get your peak production of co2 and then once it tails off at the end you end up with a little bit less than peak again until the end of the things uh, the end of the bag's life but because you get to inoculate it when you're ready, you get the full life of the bag itself from start to finish, and you get to choose when it starts and, and how long it lasts versus these are kind of already ready to go. So you know, keep in mind you have a couple options when it comes to these natural mushroom bags. They also make a kit that has a mushroom uh, substrate in a bucket, and the bucket has a pump on top. Uh, that's a really nice unit because you can actually you know plumb that uh, air tubing to a fan, you can run that pump off of a controller, and those can do quite a bit larger areas, somewhere around 10 by 10. Um, and so, you know, if you want to continue doing something safe and uh, natural with very little electricity or no electricity, stick with the mushroom cultures. If it's a small space, like a four by four, stick with the bags. If you're getting above a four by four, think about the bucket kit. Um, the kit is made by CO2 Boost Buddy. Um, last uh, on the safe and easy, no electricity, no maintenance tip would be the these Exilofizz um, by Supernatural. Um, these are just CO2 pucks. Um, I've seen people cut them in half and use them in different ways for different size spaces. But basically you drop this into a bucket of water and it has a chemical reaction that creates CO2 in your room. So, you know, if you just need a little bit of CO2 in a veg space, or if you want to just do it for a little while just to experiment to see how well it works, and you don't want to purchase anything long-term, these are kind of cool. We sell them individually as well as in cases. Um, and then also, you know, keep in mind that they would say the majority of the benefits from CO2 come from the first two to three weeks of using CO2. After that, a lot of people would say the CO2 is not nearly as important. A lot of people choose to run it all the way to the end but it shows that the majority of use is going to help in the earlier stages so if you want to just do it for a couple weeks this could be definitely a legitimate option if you don't need it to be around for months at a time um, also for non-ventilated veg tents and things like that that have um, low lights like you know CFLs or T5s you don't need a lot of CO2 but you don't have any ability to really replenish the air in there these are perfect for that throw one in the corner and your plants will have enough CO2 and you won't need to really move any air in and out to replenish the CO2 in the garden um, now we'll get up to the bigger um, units that will do larger areas pretty much it's, it kind of becomes limitless with these um, 
the generators have some pros and cons. The pros and pros from the generators are going to be that they can do really large rooms. They are able to be piped into natural gas and or propane systems that are already existing in your facilities. And then that way you'll just receive a bill basically in the mail. You don't have to go to the shop to swap out tanks or lug CO2 tanks around, which can be one of the cons of the tank systems. Um, some of the cons of the generator would be that they create you know, a good amount of heat um, and they do take some serious setup. You have to know how to set them up. Obviously, you're dealing with gas, so you want to make sure you're setting them up properly. And they do, you know, sometimes take some installation, um, you know, fees and e energy to get them set up in the right space. You might have to redirect your gas lines or your propane lines. So keep that in mind. Um, they do have some restrictions with those. Um, they can do some really large spaces. In fact, you'll mostly see these generators in larger greenhouses. They don't really mess with tanks in rooms larger than we'll say maybe 10 by 10 or 10 by 20. Um, it just starts to become a little bit tough. Um, but um, if you do have a smaller space or you have a space that doesn't have the ability to use gas or propane, there is no propane running to it, or you don't want to swap out propane tanks at the gas station in your local area, um, as or you know you don't use the large propane tanks that supply your entire house, then the CO2 tanks will be for you. That way you can get larger volumes of CO2. They can be controlled and uh, you can just run to the shop on a regular basis. And uh, if you buy multiple tanks at a time, you can even load up enough to get you through an entire you know cycle before you go back and swap out three or five at a time. Um, this is a very large tank here. We don't shop, we don't see this a lot in the shops. Usually you see the normal 20 pounders and that should get you quite a bit depending on the size of your garden. Again, if you get much bigger than we'll say a 10 by 15 or 10 by 20, you should probably look into something like a generator. But if you don't have that gas hookup, you can always just get a large volume of tanks and that can work for you. Both of these are able to function off of a CO2 controller. Um, that CO2 controller would be able to monitor the CO2 in the garden and then turn these devices on and off to keep the levels of CO2 directly where you want them. The tanks themselves are able to run off fuzzy logic and the generators do not recommend running them on fuzzy logic. Fuzzy logic, we do a video on how to control CO2, check it out. But fuzzy logic basically kind of gets to know your garden and starts to turn your tank on to try to optimize how long these tanks last so that you don't have to you know, keep running back and forth to the shop. Um, I would recommend dispersing your CO2 high in the room with any of these products. CO2 falls, it's heavier than air, so get it up high. Get some circulation fans on the floor, move it around. The levels that we're thinking of, um, you know, around uh, 1500 would be the max. And if you're doing 1500, I want you would want to be in the category of having pretty much maxed out all the other gardening things that you could think of, your temperature control, your humidity control, your lighting. Um, and then just to give it a try, uh, I would say doubling the CO2 from outside. CO2 outside ranges from 350 to 400, depending on where you're at. Highly polluted areas or highly trafficked areas can be a little higher. Um, so maybe doubling that, going around 700 or 800 would be a cool experiment. Um, getting up to 1,000 seems like you definitely get some benefits. Um, and so anywhere around there, give it a shot. With these, there's not much controlling them. With the other units, you can precisely control them. Um, some of the other parameters, I would say, for CO2 use in the garden. Uh, warmer temperatures are a, a more achievable with CO2 gardening. You can get as high as in the 90s if you had to. As long as you had high CO2, the plants could handle that. Um, and as well, I would recommend keeping your CO2 levels around 1,000 just to be safe because pushing it up to 1,500 if you're not ready can also make your plants start photosynthesizing a lot more eating a lot more and you might actually end up going hungry earlier than you want to and it can actually hurt you until you learn how to use it properly. So starting out with maybe a mediocre number between 800 and 1000 might be more realistic. Um, all this stuff's available on our website, all the equipment to run all this stuff's on our website. Uh, the natural and the easy maintenance free products are also there. Uh, I hope this video helped you out, gave you some tips. Um, there's more tips on our website, please check them out. Uh, 4hydroponics.com and we'll check you guys next time.